Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. Very underrated use of the word jabroni. It doesn't get used nearly often enough. Three jabronis Except right on this show yeah. where you are looking at a couple of jabronis here. Lawrence Jackson at Lord Don't Lose. Jay Croucher at, at uh, Croucher JD. And, of course, I am Matthew Berry. Welcome to the happy hour. It is noon on Monday on Peacock, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere, including probably in Kansas City. Yes. Where oh, yeah. yes, they sir. are heading to the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, we, we're going to talk about everything getting into this uh, this uh, championship weekend. There was some news in terms of coordinators as well, Jay Croucher. Uh, I like the fact that you are celebrating both the Chiefs and Eagles going to the Super Bowl by wearing a New York Liberty <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> the big winners yesterday. In New York. Yeah, I, I, we're wearing. I, we got green. We got red. Well, you know what? Whatever. Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence. Lawrence changes it up. You basically either wear a New York Liberty thing uh, I'll, or, I'll or Jets. Women's like, sports. It, you, but you you literally only have two sweatshirts. Yeah. Or I, I feel like – Consistency. I, yeah. Consistency. But it's like they're different. It's like he's bought he, – I feel like you're like this guy. You moved here from Australia, mm. and you're like the guy in Coming to America where you were like you, – you moved here from Australia, and you went to like the first like tacky store you could find, and you're like, what do you have – I. I New York sports fan, and that you just you like give me five of those Liberty things and give me uh, give me give me a couple of Jets uh, shirts. Okay, I'm good. I've got my wardrobe for the season. Wow, I didn't know this was gonna be a Jay Crouch's segment. I'm just. But, uh, there we I go. mean, shout What's out up? to Eddie Murphy coming to America. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Not the first time I've been compared to uh, Eddie Murphy and coming <laughs> right. to America. Listen, Lawrence, am I wrong though? <laughs> have good. you ever seen? Have you ever seen him in a non I mean, maybe New York he, Jets he, he or he New York he's Liberty? He's a big fan of Sabrina. I. Yeah, right. I love him. Sabrina and Ice Cube. Yeah, I'm all in Sabrina. Sabrina yeah. and, uh, and Patrick Mahomes. Those yeah. are my two. Right. Uh, yeah, all you right. mentioned that it was uh, 5 p.m. in Kansas City. I think it's 4 a.m. and dark in Cincinnati right now. That's also, also, also true. Uh, wherever the referees live, where do you think it is? I think it's 5 o'clock there, too. Yeah. That was my joke. I was going to say, I'm right. consistent with my wardrobe in a way that the uh, NFL referees are not consistent that been a better with joke. their calls. But, uh, yeah, a lot to get to. Let's start. There were two games yesterday. Right. One uh, was barely a game. That was a fake game of football, San Francisco, Philadelphia. We can outsource that one to Munich, London, any other European I, I, city I that wants a that. game. I tweeted that. I said we basically got a London game. Yeah. And, by the way, not my, not my joke. It was yeah. uh, Damien, our producer's joke. And, uh, but I stole it. And then we had one uh, game which was very much played in America, in Kansas oh yeah. City, oh an yeah. epic, which will be remembered, I think, Lawrence, for all the wrong reasons, but uh, can't be understated how uh, intense of a game that was. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, I think it was a great game, you know, considering some things. Uh, it was blow for blow. You know, you got what most people are calling the two top quarterbacks in the league. You know, just when you think the Chiefs are going to get, a, uh, you know, go away and go, go on a run. Joe Burrow comes back hitting Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. It was it was truly a battle um, of heavyweights in that AFC Championship, much like we all expected it to be. Chiefs barely covered, you know. That's why the spread was two and a half. And all in all, man, a great game, great finish. Let's look. I, I, we'll get to the officiating because that's got to be a, that's going to be a storyline <laughs> for you know, you know, not just uh, not just this game, but the next game as as well that we'll talk about here, but. I don't want – that's the shame of it is because so much talk is going on online after the games, during the games, and today, of course, about the officiating. And it takes away from, to your point, Lawrence, the greatness of two different teams. And and especially, like, let's give it up for my guy 15. Let's give it up for Mahomes. Yeah. Like, on yeah. out there on one ankle. And, you know, I mean, I feel like if there was one theme other than bad officiating for the weekend, it was sort of war of attrition – and who could gut it out the most, yeah. right? I mean, like, so and we'll, we'll focus here for a second, but whether it whether it was the Bengals' offensive line, yeah. whether it was Mahomes running around on one leg with, like, no wide receivers yeah. because they kept falling throughout the game, whether it was, like, okay, who's the emergency quarterback for the 49ers, whether it's Jalen Hurts, who, who's clearly not 100%. Yep. Um, the Eagles are still the healthiest team, I think, in the NFL, but Jalen Hurts is clearly not 100%. Um, it just felt like a war of attrition throughout the day uh, in terms of teams that could survive uh, with whoever else they had. Mahomes, I thought, again, whether it was a high ankle sprain or whatever it was, like we thought a season was over when they played Jacksonville. And then he came back and he limps around and he clearly wasn't 100% of this game. 
but you know what? His arm was, and he made some unbelievable plays in this one. Two touchdowns, 326, 29 of 43. He just, I mean, as you see the numbers right there, I, I did not turn the ball over. Uh, and, you know, this, the stats are just sort of ridiculous, right? He, he's the youngest quarterback in NFL history to reach 10 career playoff wins. Um, you know, three lead-changing drives in his playoff career with one minute or less on the clock, which he did right there. I mean, um, before turning, uh, like, here's the, here's the crazy stat. Most passing touchdowns in the postseason before turning 28 years old. That's why. Patrick Mahomes has 32. Number two on the list is Brett Favre with 18. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's 14 touchdown passes ahead of number two in terms of most touchdown passes in the postseason under the age of 28. Uh, look, cr NFL announcers get criticized all the time for just like, you know, going crazy on Mahomes. You going Jordan Drexler? On, like, I'm just a little bit, right? But like, I'm, the man's he, earned he, it. He, yeah. people, people are, you know, he kind of got that Steph Curry syndrome so good you know all the time always in the like when you think championships and being in the mix he's always there outside of the years where Steph Curry was hurt or whatever the Warriors are always there um uh, uh, actually Mahomes did turn the ball over the one time I remember the fumble where it yeah, slipped yeah, yeah, out yeah 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 Cincinnati didn't throw, right. didn't yeah, throw an interception but that's a yeah didn't right right a Cincinnati one. capitalized but even with that even with losing the receivers they had a couple of drives after that where they were three and out, three and out. Um, but they he he did it when it mattered the most. He made the play. Like, he is that guy. It should be no more question. Like, a lot of people on TV on other networks and shows were saying, hey, Joe Burrow already quarterbacking better than him. No. No, he ain't. Not today. Yeah. Joe Burrow is one of them dudes. Right. Right? He went, Like, if you want to say he the second best quarterback, I ain't going to argue that. But it's one guy. And he wore number 15 right there. The the other quote we could have shown at the beginning of the show uh, from Kelsey was, Burrow had my ass, <laughs> yeah. which is 1,000% uh, right. I will say to the point about this game, Jay, though, is I, normally when you're watching a game, like, well, this game's over. Like, you felt like the Eagles were going to win that, I think, from start to finish. We all picked the Eagles on Thursday's yeah. episode of this this show. But last night uh, against the, in the Chiefs-Bengals game, I was just like, Chiefs winning this game. And then Mahomes throws out, I'm like, Bengals are winning Bengals this game. Are, yeah, yeah, and then I was yeah, just like, yeah. and then they were driving. I'm like, oh, Chiefs are winning this game. Yeah. And then once again, like, up. Oh, and then they and then they throw the, they convert the fourth and sixth to Jamar Chase, you know, what covered by two people. I'm like, oh, Bengals are winning this game. Like, yeah. I went back and forth a million different times during this game of like, you know, I think, where I was convinced the other team was going to win. Yeah. A couple things. One, this was clearly a legacy game for Mahomes. I mean, this will be one of the first games that we talk about with him ever. He went down 0-4 to Joe Burrow, including getting beaten yeah. in his own house two years in a row by Burrow in the AFC title game, despite being favoured in both games. That would have been significant. The other thing that is not really coming across my timeline enough, Kansas City lost like 20% of their starters Thank in the you. game yeah. last yeah. night. That's insane. Everyone's talking about the refs. I mean, he lost, Mahomes loses Juju, Kadarius Tony, Mecole Hardman. They lose Gay and Sneed on defense, and they still right. get through and the And by game. the way, there were questions before the game whether Travis Kelsey exactly. could play because his, his lower back um, tightened up. Justin Watson was inactive for this game as well, somebody that's seen a decent amount of snaps this, this year. And so that's right. He's out there trying to win with Noah Gray. Like, they're going two tight ends, three tight ends. They're using Isaiah Pacheco as a receiver. Uh, you know, Marquez Valdez-Scantling is now his number one. Yes. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, <laughs> who's like a sort of mid-tier number four, is like suddenly becomes the best wide receiver in football for, you know, 90, 60 Mahomes minutes. Mahomes was treating Valdez-Scantling like Derek Carr treats Devontae Adams. Yes. Like it was all that was left. It was just <laughs> where, where if MBS isn't do? open, then where are we going? Yeah, Sky <laughs> Moore. The, the reason that you said it wasn't mentioned on your timeline a lot about, you know, the Chiefs shortcomings, that's because people don't like the Chiefs. They don't like Mahomes and the Chiefs and seeing them winning. I, I don't I know. Disagree. I disagree. Hang on. I see so many. No, 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 no. I'm no. up here defending the best quarterback. He don't need defending. No, it, here's, what, here's what they don't like. They don't like his brother. Hey, okay, I didn't want to say that. That's true. They don't like his brother. It's, it's, people like the Chiefs. Yeah, people it, like Andy Reid. It is people that. Like it is Mahomes. that. They it is definitely that. They don't. Right, and I'm not. I'm not sitting here trying to throw shade at Jackson Mahomes or no. That's or the, that's the fact. I'm just like the. But the fact of the matter is, is that whether you do or not, the people don't like them. Yeah. People like yeah. like yeah. other than like you know hardcore they can't get Chiefs past fans. It. 
people do not like those yeah, two he, people. <laughs> um, just Amer in terms of how they presented themselves to America, like, um, and, and so. But yes, I, so I disagree with that because I think people really like Andy Reid. They like Mahomes. I think people love Travis Kelsey. Uh, you know. So, um, so what I meant to say was they I do think people like Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, they like. Like he's personable. He's also on TikTok. He's th somebody on TikTok uh, that you like. <laughs> yeah, that that's what's crazy to me. All you just mentioned, like, how could you like not like these dudes? But like, like you said, it's like they may like Mahomes, but they might not like him because of. Uh, like right. his, it don't got nothing to do. Like he don't be out here. That doing. was one of the things that showed up on my timeline. Like, oh, uh, like what, what? What are we gonna have to? What can we deal with better? Like for the next two weeks, are we gonna? <laughs> can we deal with like Eli yeah. Apple and Mike Hinton? Uh, you know, Mike Hilton running his mouth, or can we deal with like you know, or Brittany Lynn and Jackson Mahomes? Which one could you do? Which one would you rather deal with? Um, I think I would rather <laughs> deal with Jackson and Brittany. Me too, because <laughs> like be I, could, I, I just block that out. Right, like exactly. that means nothing to like. I don't. I just be watching Mahomes, man. I'd nice little holding call from Eli Apple, uh, as was we we're waiting for it. The DPI from Eli Apple yeah. finally uh, gets the uh, the penalty. <laughs> but with Mahomes, like all the talk about him and Burrow and Allen and Herbert, whoever, like in terms of what goes into the betting lines, it's Patrick Mahomes tier one by himself. He means more to how much the team is favored more than any other quarterback, and it's not particularly close. What he does for passing offense, like. No other, no one else can do this without wide receivers. No. He doesn't need wide receivers, and they still have by far the best passing offense in the league. Again, we already mentioned Justin Watson was inactive. Kadarius Tony played four snaps. Miko Hardman played 15 snaps. Juju Smith-Schuster played less than 50% of the snaps. Marquez Valdez Scantling, who um, you know ha has prior to this game had only two games in his uh, career with the Chiefs with over 75 receiving yards. He'd had only one game with five or more receptions since joining the Chiefs prior to this game, and he winds up with six for 116 and a touchdown. No one saw this coming except <laughs> one guy. The other bargain bin guy that, again, wouldn't want in a cash game, but in DFS, I think it's sort of interesting, and I wouldn't mind kind of a, a you know, uh, putting a bet on any time touchdown, is Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Yeah, yeah. Just because I think he'll see some Eli Apple, and I think Eli Apple, who's been running his mouth doesn't on make a social lot of friends. media, <laughs> he doesn't make a lot of friends. And uh, I just think uh, Eli Apple is burnable, is uh, is oh, very sure. burnable. Sure. And I yeah. and I think that he'll find himself on MVS. They're going to take a couple of shots and try to pick on Eli Apple in this game. And I think MVS is the most likely candidate. You could see some Justin Watson, um, but yeah. Anyway, I don't mind a uh, you know a small bet on uh, anytime touchdown for MVS. Yeah. By and and here's the play right here. Uh, by any time touchdown, by a small bet, I meant you know thousands of dollars. <laughs> um, plus three thirty-three. Yeah, plus plus, plus three thirty. Anytime touchdown there. Um, I wish our editors, when they were playing that back, they could have cut out me mentioning some Justin Watson. <laughs> yeah, I'm about, was, I'm about to say. I'm about to say that that's the meat. Was, of the, that's the meat of it. Right. I think he was a healthy scratch there. I, <laughs> you know, if I'm gonna victory lap with my with my clips, guys, could you cut out the part that I got wrong? As long as like, as long as we're like. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, whatever. Yeah. And, and by the way, that's not exactly why it happened. It happened. You know, I predict you actually called three wide receivers going down for the Chiefs <laughs> and NBS yeah, becoming Devontae Adams. You know what? Sometimes it's better to be lucky <laughs> than good. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we did. We did say that MVS would, was a good cheap option in DFS. He was obviously all the winning lineups I saw had MVS, including mine. Mm -hmm. I had a really nice yeah. day at DFS because uh, I, I went, I went heavy. I went, I went with a Mahomes. I went with a Mahomes. I went with an anti-Travis Kelsey stack because I figured everyone would go with Kelsey. So I went with, you know, yeah. uh, uh, Mahomes and uh, MVS. And the the anyway. other thing with MVS is that Mahomes he missed Higgins. him twice over the middle. Mahomes could have – MVS lost. Yes. There was 40 Deadly. yards on the table. So he could have had, you know, 150 yards and a touchdown. Eight catches very, very easily. Uh, huge game for him. Hopefully they won't be so dependent on him in the Super Bowl if we uh, assume that they'll get at least a couple of guys back. Uh, but yeah, MBS was the story last night. Yeah, Why and not? by the way, I just want to give the kid credit just because he is somebody that has been maligned over the years, whether it was in Green Bay or since coming to Kansas City. He doesn't earn enough targets. He's he's somebody that has he's just a he's just a sprinter. You know what I mean? He's just he's he's a he's a go route and that's it. And the fact of the matter is is that when they needed him the most, you know, a game in which hey, everyone is like Stepped it's up. you, yeah. MBS, like we got no one else, right? You know, like. <laughs> You're the only guy, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he stepped up.
he stepped up and he produced in clutch moments and he made some great catches as well. And, you know, people were yelling at me on Twitter because I was just like, I, I you know, Mahomes made this, he made this one great catch, MVS did, where he had to twist to the other side and catch it up in the air. Bad and, throw. And, right, and Romo, hey, Romo was throw? just like, Romo was talking about how great a throw it was from Mahomes. Right. And there are people arguing on Twitter like it was actually a good throw because the coverage was on the other hip and he threw it away from the coverage. Mm -hmm. So the only place that he could make the catch and regardless of whether it was a great throw or bad throw or or, you know, could have been a little bit better throw. The fact of the matter is, is regardless, all the praise was about Mahomes. And I'm like, this guy just <laughs> literally had to change direction yeah, in midair yeah, and yeah, make a catch, yeah. you know, yeah. catch like this on the other side. He was he was turned this way and he made it this way. Wes Welker. Wes Welker couldn't do that in the Super Bowl. Couldn't no, make that catch. And, no, uh, he could yeah, not. So I just anyway, I just arms. anyway, <laughs> MBS is all the flowers to Marquez Valdez Scantling, who now has two career playoff games with over 100 receiving yards. He had one in that Tampa Bay game with the Packer again. Packers playing the Buccaneers in 2020. Can you imagine Mahomes at some point on the bench, Mahomes and Andy Reid, they go off to MVS and like, we need you to be Tyreek Hill. Right. <laughs> like you're, you're, you're the, the guy. guy. Yeah, you're the captain now, MVS. Yeah, right. But the captain again also was Travis Kelsey, oh, who yeah. uh, just did what Travis Kelsey does, goes seven for 78, touchdown. I think the play we'll remember most though is the, uh, the failed hook and ladder, which honestly might have set hook and ladder plays back 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Because as we Here take a is. look at the play now, I don't know why teams don't do this more often. Maybe they don't do it more often because of what Kelsey just did there. Yeah. And the poor but like, but too by the far way, apart. But but no, but honestly, with a with a better flip and I'm like it's just low. But if 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 that if that hits him in stride, it's McKinnon's a, got a cut touchdown there. It's such a bad throw. It's so they feel like you would have practiced that more. They need rugby training. Bring him in from Australia, Matthew. Right. I mean we'll, it we'll was practice. a good play, him just catching the ball a couple yards beyond the first down. So luckily that in that didn't end up in a turnover for I, I, I just like the fact that Travis Kelsey playing with a bad back in a game in which he goes seven for seventy eight in a touchdown. He ties Rob Gronkowski for the most receiving touchdowns by a tight end in the playoffs in the NFL history. Um and has scored at least one touchdown now in 11 of 17 career games. Just unbelievable game from start to finish for Travis Kelsey, playing with a bad back. After the game, he's the MVP. He calls out the mayor, calling him a jabroni. Burrowhead, my ass. Whole thing. And what, Lawrence, what Jay Croucher decides to focus on is like, whatever, a failed hook and ladder. Like a, just a slightly <laughs> low throw Jeez. on the hook and ladder. Like there's 8 billion things you could say positive about Travis Kelsey, but this one, <laughs> You know, I you mean, know, yeah. the Australian, the Australian a hole over here. <laughs> I like, mean, just you know, this is come on. Like, ahead. I was about to start talking about how he's 34 years old, bad back, and they doubling him. He can't run no faster than the four nine <laughs> right. and the 40, but he always open, always catching touchdowns. Like, we go. I, I, I mean, a lot of people will say Gronk is the goat at tight end, but I want to know what Travis Kelsey got to do from here on out to be the goat, because that boy be balling. Did he get a little, little carried away at the end, Lawrence, with the game to still to win, to win the Super Bowl? Did he get too carried away? Are you happy with that? With, you, you talk about on the, the stage. Did he go a little bit too much? Nah, like no, 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 man, that's no. that Cincinnati Mary. What right, are you exactly. talking about? Come on. He did not, and I'll tell you why. Because all he's doing is he didn't say anything about Philadelphia. It'd be one thing yeah. if he's like saying like, oh, uh, you know, because what the Cincinnati mayor, I don't know if everyone saw what the Cincinnati mayor <laughs> oh, did. Yeah. The Cincinnati mayor made a proclamation basically saying that like they wanted to investigate <laughs> what a uh, paternity suit because there, there might be that Joe Burrow might be Mahomes' daddy. <laughs> right. I mean, like he was just like he it's declared good. this whole thing and uh, that, that he was going to content. and that he was going to Burrow head. Yeah, you know, I mean, like the whole thing, like the that mayor, did it for the Bengals. That did, that it, did it for yeah, the Bengals. And I'm just so my point is, Travis Kelsey, like if you talk the talk, you must walk the walk. And the Bengals did not walk the walk. Um, they didn't ask the mayor to like do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, we ain't putting this on Joe Burrow. <laughs> right. We like Joe Burrow. We like Joe <laughs> Burrow. Well, but, you know, but honestly, but Eli Apple, you know, popping off on Twitter the way he does. And, you know, and um uh, you know, um, Hilton talking about Burrowhead. He's the one who coined Burrowhead. And anyway, so was, he's, I think Ch Travis Kelsey is completely justified in calling the mayor a jabroni. Yeah. The mayor is a jabroni. <laughs> he is a jabroni. You know, yes, and, and I feel, I've said this before, I've said this before on my old show. Back, I used to, this was a running joke on my old show. But we should turn now to Cincinnati here and just talk about the fact, I always say Bengals fun. What happens when you root for the Bengals? You get boned. 
You get bone, right? And I just and I feel bad for Bengals fans. I have for years and years and years. They got they constantly, you know, they got boned by all the Andy Dalton years and and um, you know, and now I I feel like they got they kind of got boned by the Cincinnati mayor, and, and, <laughs> and right because like, dude, you ain't out here with us, you know. And I feel like they got boned by the refs. Like I. You hate, like, that's what sucks is, right, the Chiefs put on an epic performance, right? And Mahomes just, like, gutting it out. And, again, they they're, they they were down, what, seven starters, right? You know, like five, 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 five starters and another one who's less than 100%. And, you know, and, and we but we have to talk about the officiating. Yeah, I mean, as someone who is heavily invested financially in the Chiefs, yeah. and uh, we've got our Super Bowl tickets we do. Uh, from Vegas. That I went we to can check how much money we're making <laughs> yeah. if, the, if the Chiefs win. And <laughs> as I was watching that Taking game... Taking more of BetMGM's money, baby. I was thinking, like, oh, that's that's a nice thing that happened there. Oh, right. we get the third and nine play. We get to do that again when they wave the play. Like dead. that there just so no many bizarre. Sense. I've never seen that before. Well, <laughs> we're just going to do a do-over. Yeah, like, we're what? We did the whole play. They ran off the field. Is this a playground? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, apparently, no, it's the AFC Championship game. Like, it's literally like, that's the kind of thing, like, you're playing flag football with your boys in the backyard. And even then, you want to call for a do-over, and everyone, half the group is like, nah, man, we ain't doing a do-over. Like, uh, what are you doing? How is uh, this a first down? That's oh. not a first down. <laughs> right. When he reaches this out. Is the, this is also, the, for those listening, this is the MBS play where he re, he extends. Should have been a fumble ball, as well. But, like, but, you know, as we talked about, like, as far as I, I'm not an officiating expert, except it's I, I know what's bad when I see it. Yeah. Like, right. It's I don't the believe goal it's, line. They, thank you. It's not the goal line. That's what? the part. Is it, it's, it's, where, it's where the knee goes down. It's where the knee goes down. Um, and, and so... He's he's got, but he but, brings but it like, back in, right? Yeah. He brings it back in, and like you get, like think about this, like a guy runs and then he like suddenly reverses two yards, it gets tackled. Yeah. That's where the ball. That's where the ball. It's not where it's it's not college where you get forward progress. No. It's it's where you're tackled, right? I mean, am I wrong were, on this? Like I, you know, like I think it's the you, fact that it's yeah, had he landed the ball down and that's where right. it finished, but it, the play didn't finish there. It finished right. with it back in. Right. I, I didn't pulled understand it back that. In, like his knee's not down. When he reaches, if his if his, if he had reached to the first down and his knee goes down, then right, okay, that makes sense. But when he pulls it back in and then he gets tackled, right? I There's that one was a weird one. To the me. third and nine one, I think that one's the worst. The fact that Frank Clark didn't get called for roughing the passer in the end zone on Joe Burrow, Joe, he takes like he takes three, three extra steps, steps and then three just extra bang. steps and, and pushes Burrow, and it, that's clearly and I and I, listen, I'm actually okay with him swallowing their whistles in that particular case yep. uh, because it's like it's a late game and you don't want like them to extend the drive. Okay, fine. But then then the point is is like on the other side when Aussie hits him, you know, literally like he, it's it's a bang bang play. This is this is uh this is third and four and Mahomes scrambling. He's speed. trying to get to wow. the and, and there he is just like literally like it's a bang bang play and if you if you see like when they slow it down, I don't know if we're gonna have the, the slow mo, yeah, there but there go. you go. You see, like there, if you see it, the, you see their feet at the very bottom. If we run it again, look at the feet at the very bottom. It sort of gets tripped up. Mahomes kind of trips over his feet, which causes him to fall. And if he doesn't follow him out of bounds, Mahomes might have turned up the field and got like, I guess by by a technicality, it is a foul. But you hate to see that decide a season and it did in some ways it did at the same time Lawrence like that gets called a foul every single time like as soon as that happened I was like all right that's in real time that's minus 10,000 yeah, to get called of course, of course. after this you know after this whole season has went you know it's just hard to know what is and what what's a push out of bounds what's a roughing the passer like it's we've seen like the worst of them like especially in the season so it just comes down to the point where, like, when it when you see it happen or you see it might happen, you just be like, well, let's see if they're going to just throw it on this particular time because we don't truly know what it is because we've seen the tickiest, tackiest roughing the passes get caught this season. And then when they get driven into the mud, you know, or field turf, they all play on that now. You know, sometimes they don't get the call. It's just – 
I don't know, man. It's, it's, I don't know. Sometimes I just, it ain't even worth stressing about. There were so many moments where the Bengals got off the field on third down. It's like, oh, no, we're coming back. Oh, what is it this right. time? Oh, official waved the play dead. No one realized. Oh, there's a holding penalty that kind of wasn't really a hold. It was just, just all I, over Again, the place. Bengals got – I feel bad for Bengals fans. You guys I, got boned. You guys <laughs> did. I, I was rooting I, – and this is me. Like, people always – because I'll bitch about the refs, uh, refs, especially when it comes to the commanders, right? But um, – uh, and so they'll say, oh, you're a homer. And that's – True, by the way. I'm completely a homer, obviously. But in this one, like, I was legit rooting for the Chiefs, guys. Like, I went to – I was at Arrowhead last <laughs> weekend. I, my wife came out. Like, we, NBC had that game, and then I stayed and watched the game and the Chiefs. And, the you know, everyone was so incredibly – and Kansas City was welcoming to me. My wife bought, like, a Chiefs hat. You know, like, whatever. Like, I was rooting for the Chiefs. You and I both had a, a significant financial <laughs> interest in the Chiefs winning. I picked them on the show. Chiefs minus two and a half. I'm in playoff pools where I've got a Mahomes-Kelsey stack. Like, I wanted the Chiefs to win. And even with my homerism of desperately wanting the Chiefs to win, I'm like – Bengals got boned. Like, and, and I don't know that the Bengals win the game if it gets called correctly. You still don't know if that 15, you know, that if the roughing the, the quarterback play doesn't happen, like, does Mahomes still complete a long pass? Do they get a touchdown that goes to overtime? You know, you never know. Do, I just the, the one thing I want to mention before we talk about Higgins and Chase, uh, who had great games, is that, like, Chris Jones won the game for yeah. Kansas City. He oh, yeah, won that right. game. And for all the talk, all the calls, Cincinnati were marching down the field live after Burrow completes the third and 16 to Hurst, which I don't know how he got so open. The Bengals at that point were like minus 250 to win the yeah. game and get to the Super Bowl. And then they didn't because Chris Jones made a play. He was amazing. Uh, DB Trent McDuffie, he fell on that play. Yeah. That's how uh, it was a good route by uh, Hayden Hurst, yep. I believe, who caught it. He, at the break, he fell down got open so yeah yep. but. So, incredible game from chris jones but on the bengals side but yeah i mean like and the truth of the matter is is like the mahomes turnover like it's a gift like yeah. you guys got to, in addition like you game like was you, done the game was done if, if they can they get a couple more first downs yep. and even if they get a field goal game was done but mahomes just does this like just has a brain fart or something yeah. like that yeah. and like ball slips out Couldn't and all of a sudden they, 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 like nothing there was no pressure around him it was just literally like Self-inflicted wound there, and so you got the, the Bengals got a gift there. But just you would have liked to seen the game without officiating controversy. That's yep. all. I mean, I'm just you know it, that's it, that's it, what's frustrating. It, it's, it's tough too in these championship games where everybody's watching. When yes. you got a one o'clock slate and there's eight games, there's not the fo the same type of focus. When you get the fo when there's one game on of this magnitude, it definitely heightens well, that as well. And, and they want to get it right. I don't. I, it, I don't – all the, you know, so many people on Twitter are like, NFL is rigged. I do not believe that at all. I do not <laughs> believe that at all. I want to be very clear about that. I don't believe that at all. They want to get it right. I believe the officials on the field want to get it right. I believe the NFL wants to get it right. I think what's frustrating is is the inconsistency from yeah. game to game, from crew to crew, yeah. and, and that there's certain things that don't seem to make total sense. And we'll talk about this more – when we get to the Eagles game, but the thing that is really curious to me is that they have the ability within the rules of the game to use the replay assist for New York to call down and say, nope, this was the right, the call was wrong in the field. This is what it should be. And it feels very arbitrary as to when that gets used and when it doesn't. And that's the weird part to me. That's yeah, the part yeah. I think needs to be much more consistent and figured out in the offseason. Yeah, that was very peculiar. Last thing on the Chiefs, running game didn't get anything going. I think that was just because they were able to oh. stack the box because none of the receivers could get any separation. We didn't read too much into that, and we'll talk about Pacheco and McKinnon uh, and the matchup in the Super Bowl uh, as we get closer. It, it, they just couldn't get anything going, so I think they just felt like they had, that they had more strength with Pacheco, and he was just on the field, and then you know, credit the Bengals' pass rush for getting into it. So there's a lot of just kind of dump-offs to Pacheco, who uh, set a career high with uh, with five receptions, I believe. On the other side of the ball, yeah, it, I mean, it's weird, right? I mean, Samaj P. Ryan actually the more effective runner than Joe Mixon. P. Ryan five for 25, five for 22, Mixon eight for 19. Both of them catch three balls in the passing game, but they just didn't get much from any of their running backs here. Credit the, the Chiefs' defensive line here. Higgins finally had a nice game. Yes. He's been kind of quiet throughout these playoffs. But six for 83 and a touchdown, leading the team in targets, as you see it there on your screen. And then Jamar Chase, six for 75. And for me, the biggest play was that, you know, they fourth and six. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, again, like that was one where I was like, oh, the Chiefs, are, the Bengals were in this game. Yeah. It was fourth and six, and they go for it. 
and just an unbelievably ballsy call and throw by Burrow to throw into double coverage, and Jamar Chase comes down with it. Yep. I, mean, I believe this is, this, is, this is the play right here. Yep. You know, he's basically throwing from his 50, and he gets it down to the six. Yep. Jamar Chase does. Like, I mean, just an unbelievable play, catch throw. Um, Really, maybe, uh, really impressive. Maybe Kirk Cousins should have thrown that ball to Justin Jefferson uh, at the end of the Giants game. Maybe just it put it up in it double coverage. Doesn't shot. matter. Give, shot. Give, give your man a shot. Cut to Kirk Cousins. You know, <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks since the playoffs are over. Everything sort of died down. Let me just tune over to Peacock, see what's going on, you know. And all of a sudden, just Australian can, 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 yeah. New York Liberty hoodie. Yeah, just, yeah some, some, some guy with an Australian accent and a New York Liberty sweatshirt is taking shots at me. Why am I catching shrapnel? I've been out for two and a half weeks. The hell? All right. On that note, we're going to go to break when we come back. Break down the NFC right. Championship game. Credit the greatest the game that Munich never saw. Yeah, credit to the Chiefs. Credit to Andy Reid. Go Chiefs. Currently going as quarterback eight on Yahoo seventh round. I think that's too low. Now, everyone knows about the rushing, but people question the passing. They question the accuracy. Right. But think about another young quarterback who had good running but had questionable accuracy, Josh Allen. Look at Josh Allen's second year, and then look at Jalen Hurts' second year, which he just completed. Jalen Hurts, more passing yards, right. higher completion percentage, more rushing yards, same interceptions, same touchdowns per game. What happened in year going into year three for Josh Allen? They gave him Stephon Diggs. Exploded. Completion percentage goes up. Right. He was the number one quarterback in fantasy. What they do this year, they gave him A.J. Brown, who Jalen Hurts is very close to off the field. So with a second year of Devontae Smith as well, the number one quarterback in fantasy is within the range of outcomes for Jalen Hurts. I'm at QB4. I'm not saying he's got Josh Allen's arm. Yes. But I think the passing improves a lot, and he's going to be a top five fantasy quarterback this year. Why on earth? <laughs> Why on earth would we be showing a clip from August 5th in the preseason? The very first thing I ever did for uh. NBC Sports when I joined. I announced later in that segment, I announced that Jalen Hurts was my fantasy ride or die. I said he could take a Josh Allen-like leap this year. You heard me compare him <laughs> to Josh so Allen times. right there. <laughs> you heard me compare him to Josh Allen. People scoffed at me, Lawrence Jackson. People people yelled at me. They said I was crazy. They said, okay, fine. We get that he might be a good fantasy quarterback because of the rushing. But, like, the idea that he's going to take a Josh Allen-like leap, the fact that you would compare him from Josh Allen year two and Jalen Hurts year two, of course, uh, Josh Allen in his year three took the Bills to the AFC championship game, was, um, you know, was the number one quarterback in fantasy and obviously in the MVP discussion. Um, uh and, and the fact that I would say that Jalen Hurts could have that kind of year, no one thought, everyone was like, you're crazy, including Chris Sims. And you know what? <laughs> Chris Sims Jalen Hurts. Strides. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Chris Sims knows how I feel about uh, Jalen Hurts. And so I'm sitting here repping my ride or die, who is now a Super Bowl playing quarterback. He is headed to the Super Bowl. He did what Josh Allen could not do which is in his third year, which is lead his team to the Super Bowl. Ooh. Let's hear that. I'm just saying. No, I, mean, like, no, no, I love look. Josh Allen. Josh Allen is great. If we, if I was yeah, an NFL, Allen. if I was an NFL general manager and I'm drafting a team like overall, Josh Allen goes before Jalen Hurts. Like I love Josh Allen. Eh. Uh, yes, he does. Eh. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, he does. Okay. Stop it. All right, he well, does. All right. But, you, you saw him play like, Hey, I don't know. But <laughs> Stephon Diggs. Okay. No, I understand. I understand. Listen, AJ I'm not Brown. saying he goes. He, I'm not saying he goes. I'm many saying rounds it's not easy. Jalen Hurts. I agree with you there. <clears throat> My point is, it's easy. don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm taking jo anyway, Josh Allen is, is still a uh, one of. The, he had a bad day at the office, look. but but what I'm saying is, all I'm saying, look, God damn it, I'm like, look, I'm trying victory to lap I'm, o'clock. I'm, exactly, I'm, I'm trying to victory lap here, I'm Lawrence. I'm trying to congratulate you. See, look, <laughs> right. see, look, I, I yes, didn't. Sir. I congratulate you and everybody else, you know, coming into 2022 who felt like Jalen Hurts could do a little some. Um, and I did not scoff yeah. at you when you said this. In fact, this I, I, not. I, I, I said, welcome to the club. Uh -huh. You know, because, see, back when <laughs> nobody was vibe. reading my tweets back in 18, I was tweeting at myself in right. 2018. <laughs> right. I got I got receipts 18, 19, 20, 21. I got all that. Jer I should be wearing that jersey right now, Matthew Berry. Give it up. No, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. 
<laughs> when, 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 uh, like a year from now, when Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Lawrence Jackson <laughs> is, is going on, and I'm like, hey, remember, remember Matthew Berry? When I'm like, what happened? You know, and they're yeah. doing features, so I'm like, whatever yeah. happened to Matthew Berry? Yeah, then, Jackson. yeah, then you take whatever jerseys you want. Yeah. But for right now, no, absolutely not. Get your own jersey. Unbelievable. Uh, like, well, anyway, Jalen Hurts is my fantasy ride or die, and he's now headed to the Super Bowl. Thrilled for him. Congratulations. Uh, let's talk about this game. This one, this one was a bummer for me. Um, it's a bummer for America, and it was a good job. America. I'm glad you did a four-minute victory lap because it's four minutes less that we have to talk about 49ers yeah. Eagles. <laughs> yeah, fair was, enough. It's just a fake game of football. There's yeah. just nothing to read into this, Lawrence, from a 49ers perspective. I mean, Brock Purdy was quarterback in the second half, but uh, they're just. Is that a, did, do you think we should do two more minutes of me patting <laughs> myself on the back, or no? Maybe, 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 maybe. Why did you, they you know Wildcat? Why were they running Wildcat? I don't understand that, it. You, you know what? Maybe you should keep paying yourself on the back because there's still people out there. Who doubt Jalen Hurts. Who doubt this man now, in the Super Bowl. Part, part, again, like that, we showed about half the clip, but I will say one of the things that I talked about in that clip and I've talked about in the preseason with you, Jay, as well, is that I thought Jalen Hurts, there were a lot of questions about Jalen Hurts. Is like They're like, okay, fine. Yes, he could get fantasy because he runs. But, like, can he be a franchise quarterback? The Eagles should have drafted a quarterback last year. Right. You know, why did they not draft a quarterback? They only brought in Gardner Minshew, who isn't really competition. And I talked about the fact, one of the best offensive lines in football, really easy schedule, especially at the start of the year, that they would get off to a hot start, that I believe Jalen Hurts not only had the ability to be a great fantasy quarterback, but a true franchise quarterback for this team. He's proven that, you know, he's become one of the stars and one of the faces of the league. Uh, and – Clearly, as we talked about in the last segment, he's not healthy. He was out there gutting it out that against team. a tough Niners defense. Yeah, I think, look, we were making the joke all season long that we we're going to have to wait until the Super Bowl to figure out if Philadelphia are any good because they had the easiest schedule in the league. And now this playoff schedule, they beat the Giants and they beat Christian McCaffrey playing quarterback. And look, I'm being a little right. facetious. Clearly, the Eagles are very good, but we're going to get, we're going to really look, understand there's how There's people who's really feeling like that. Like, they had the lightest road to the... But the week leading up to the Giants game, it was like, uh-oh, watch out for them Giants. They remind right. us of Eli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they punched them in the mouth, right? So now they're back to those sorry little Giants, you know, like in the movie. Um, you know, now, then they get the, the, the 49ers. Unfortunately, they lose Brock Purdy early. Um, I don't know if you guys had a score prediction in this game, but I had it 28-17 to 17 with Brock Purdy. So I, this looks – that's with no quarterback – 31-7, to 7, it kind of – that's how it would go. I thought, the, I thought the Eagles would win and they would cover. They would cover the two and a half. I didn't actually put out a specific score prediction. But to your point yeah. about, you know, it's kind of an easy road to the playoffs. I mean, give the Eagles defense credit. And I thought this was – so, Shell Kapadia on, on Twitter tweeted this out. These, these stats are via True Media, uh, which we also use here at uh, NBC Sports. True Media is awesome. But anyway, the Eagles defense – get this. They've registered a sack on 11.5% of, of opponent dropbacks this season. That is the highest rate for any defense in the NFL since the year 2000. Mm. The difference, and not only have they been dominant this year and the most dominant of the, of the last 22 years, but they've been, think about how dominant they've been this year. The difference between the Eagles and the number two team in this stat, the Patriots, is the same as the difference between number two and number 29. Like, that's just how massive a gap it is from the Eagles all the way down uh, to number two as well. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, literally a, the highest sack rate on, yeah. of any defense yeah. since 2000. Just, I mean, they just, they're making opponents look bad. It's I mean, they, they injured two quarters. Like, we talked about the Brock Purdy, but, like, part of the, re right. the reason why Josh Johnson and Brock yes. Purdy left this game is because the Eagles defense and was able to get to that. And, and we talked about that. That's what we talked about. And we talked about Trent Williams. We talked about this 49ers offensive line and how good it was, and the Eagles did not care. Yeah. Just the level of depth on the defensive line is just insane as we look at uh, how much the Niners struggled on offense. Just, I mean, yeah, it just wasn't a real game on that side of the ball. But the fact that there's Hassan Reddick, there's Josh Sweat, there's Brandon Graham, there's Javon Hargrave, and Dominican Sue, like Robert right. Quinn. Like Robert Quinn's on this team. We just don't forget right. about him. He always led the league. He did lead the league in wait, sacks wait last year behind TJ Watt. Good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, wait till he just got... it's just <laughs> insane across the board. But 
I think, to me, the most material thing that comes out of this game as we look towards the Super Bowl is that Jalen Hurst does not look right. right. Uh, and he was wincing every time that he took hits. It, and in a way that, you know, you don't normally wince, that he doesn't win. He was, ta- he was in sliding. In a way that I would have winced. Yes, it was like Matthew Berry out there taking hits from uh, Nick <laughs> right. Bosa. But no, no, I, I mean, those are the kind of wins well. that, I, well, like, when I'm stuck in, like, a crowded elevator. Yeah, <laughs> like, those, those are the kind of hits that I take that I can't, my soft, doughy body can't take. But, um, but yes. That, but like so, imagine me, right? Same thing. And uh, it seemed like Nick Sirianni was just going to keep calling design run plays when Hertz clearly wasn't right. And my concern would be that there are two quarterbacks in the Super Bowl who both have injury concerns, and I think most people are more focused on Mahomes. I'm more worried about Hertz. Fair. Two more weeks for Mahomes and his ankle. I think he's going to be fine yeah, be by good. the Super Bowl. But Hertz, I mean, he got injured what six weeks ago, and right. he's still not right. I yeah, imagine yeah. I'm just speculating here, but I think there's probably like a so like a crack in his shoulder or something. Like it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right, and the fact is, is that uh, I know this sounds insane that like uh, ankle versus whatever the injury hurts is, but it feels like it's limiting hurts more. Like I feel like you put Patrick Mahomes in a wheelchair, he could still throw 50 yards. Yeah, I'm dead serious. Like with the arm. literally, he's just he's got the kind of arm that literally sitting down he can throw at 50 yards. He literally does not need his feet. Whereas Hertz does need his feet. Mobility is a bigger part of his. Obviously, it's a part of Mahomes' game, but her, mobility is a bigger part of Hertz' game at the moment than it is Mahomes. I think you're completely right about that. They are going, if the Eagles are going to win this Super Bowl, they are going to have to run the ball effectively and give them credit because the Niners' run defense came in yep. here and they were one of the best in the NFL and they ran all over them. Miles Sanders, 11 for 42, right? Gets the two rushing touchdowns. Boston Scott, 6 for 21. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell, 14 for 48. Like, they ran effectively with each one of their guys. Uh, and they, it seems in the second half, they sort of limited Miles Sanders and kind of went that more Gainwell. That is a huge and, hole and, uh, right there. Scott. But that's a – right, that is a – that is just a uh, an absolutely huge hole um, at, on both if, touchdowns. If you like, could, he's just yeah. not touched. If you could see these runs, you see the linebackers holding – that's right. the effect of a player like Jalen Hurts. Right. They have to wait to see yeah. what he's going to do, and that creates those situations. Boston for these Scott runs. doesn't get touched until he gets doesn't to the goal line. T- like it's why, like right. we're looking at it saying, like, this is the Niners' run defense? Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris McCaffrey's touchdown, he had to run through, like, four <laughs> different Eagles defenders to get to the end zone. Like, Sanders was yeah, – Sanders does not get touched on his two touchdown runs, and Scott doesn't get touched until he's basically at the goal line. Yeah, I will so, say, like, none of these – they weren't efficient on the ground. Uh, all these guys averaged under four yards per carry, but a lot of that was because they just – they hung up tools in the second half. And yeah. they just kind of – and the Niners knew they were going to run every play. When they needed to run, particularly in that second quarter yeah. when the game started to get a little bit dicey yeah. after that McCaffrey run, Gainwell broke. Broke some. Those four guys, Gainwell, Sanders, Hurts, and Scott, they all broke double-digit yard yeah. runs, which and, was key. And Jalen Hurts gave you enough on the ground. It didn't start off good for him in the ground, but like, it did, like you, the hope is that with the two weeks, both quarterbacks, Mahomes and Hurts, will get a little more healthier. The good thing about Hurts is we haven't heard that it's gotten any worse. So, I mean, if he could give you this, you know, with a little bit of more passing, they didn't have to pass much in this game then, I mean, you'll, you'll take that in the Super Bowl. Yep. My concern, Matthew, is mostly around the wide receivers for Hurts yeah. with Smith and A.J. Brown, where it just didn't seem like he was – just he didn't have the feel or the velocity on those deep balls, those go routes that he's so good at all through the year. He destroyed the Giants in that first matchup with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, and as a result, they did nothing he, yesterday. He, he, a couple of different times he had A.J. Brown open deep. A.J. Brown had beaten his guy, and just he just needs to be hit in stride, and that's either yeah, a touchdown yeah, or he, a very long yeah. reception. And Hurts just overthrew him. Just missed him. Also, too, shout out to uh, Shavarius Ward. He, they were testing him. And A.J. Brown beat him once. Yeah. And, and Jalen Hurst missed the throw there. But they were testing uh, Ward. And, you know, every – it seemed like he ran – he was covering like nine go balls. And he answered the bell. Yeah. No, he really did. Devontae Smith had to make an unbelievable catch on one of them to get deep. And then it yeah. actually – right, catch in quotes. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, Lawrence, because – uh, here, here now, it is. Now that play was wow. So this, this is, is I think this is the best example of I don't understand when and how they use, insta- you know, um, they uh, the replay assist. That, though, <laughs> right? Bro. I mean, like, challenge Smith makes that. an unbelievable play down all the way down to like the the six yard line, um, but he he and he makes the one handed grab and it's it's a sh- it, it looks great and you're like oh is he inbounds or not and. Uh, he has both knees get down. They're looking right there. They're, he literally, like, if you watch the replay, if you're seeing it there on the screen, look, there's a there's a referee literally right there. And 
the ball's turned from a little bit, but right. He's, he's, he's probably looking for the feet. When he's doing that right when there. When he's doing that right there, <laughs> right? He was doing this, which I'm sure is the eagle signal like, hey, yeah. guys, run a play yeah. quickly. Yeah. We got to go. That's, that's as that's, much as that's on like New York and replays. It's like Carl Shanahan. Two yes. point. Carl yeah. Shanahan has, it wasn't a great day for Carl Shanahan, who may win coach of the year in a couple of weeks, but that was not his finest hour at all. I don't know. I mean, it was just they were on a hiding to nothing in the fourth quarter well, in the second half, but still. Well, like, but it's also, awesome. by the way, it's. It, like they call it a play it's tough to use a challenge that early sure. it, that was very early in the game i think that was the first drive yeah, right first and drive. it was the first drive and so you're just like and it looks good because again you're yeah. i don't know that's that's a tough one but again like that's my point about replay assist like on sometimes i just they immediately buzz down like ah we're gonna take a look at that and it turns out nope don't you don't need to waste a challenge on it we're reversing it that's one where they absolutely should have said hey hang on for a second we want to take sure. a look yeah. at this like like that's feels to me like what the hell do I know but feels to me that like replay is assist replay assist is built for literally a play like that where the referee can't see it because Smith's back is to the referee so whether the ball hits the ground or not is hidden from the referee that's right there he's looking to see okay uh. he came down with a ball he, he sees him catch it with the one hand and comes down and both knees are in bounds okay great but he can't see possession and that's where replay assist should be able to come in yeah. they see it immediately and I don't understand when what wh when they decide to and when they don't and that's the inconsistency that, tough, that yeah. drives me crazy and i feel terrible for the 49ers because the other thing is is that the 49ers were in the despite josh johnson coming in for brock Purdy, who goes four for four and then leaves with the with the elbow injury like they were in this game it was 14 7 it was looking like you know and i'm like oh hey yeah. i think the under is going to hit and the under yeah. ended up did hitting but like <laughs> yeah. It became a lot closer I than think, it should have. I think with had Josh Johnson been able to stay in the game, like they would have competed simply because he's an actual functioning quarterback, and he, right. I mean, but he had the he had the bad bad turnout fumble that yes. made it twenty one seven at yeah. the end of the half. Like if they just run the ball, like if he just catches the ball and hands off, yeah. they get out I of mean, there. They, yeah, they, they get out of that. They get out of the half down fourteen seven, and they get the ball back. Yeah. And here's the play. Like this is just you know like so that. You know, that's this is the play where uh, Josh Johnson gets injured um, and just, you know, that's I mean, the like pressure. It's, it's the, the pressure. Like, it just, you, I mean, he just gets beat, man. That's, like, that looks like the same play that happened to Brock yeah. Purdy. Yeah, that's just Indominus and Sue just beating the guy, man. Like it's it's and, and then this, this is, is the just, one like, you can't just, have. You can't have that one on your own 30 yard line. Um, you're down 14 seven. You have a little bit of time. He completed a first down, so now they're going to try to go. You know, they're going to try to make a, a run. Yeah. Can they get a field goal before the end of the half? And then just like, it's, yeah, just, a, it, it it's was, just a play you can't have. Like, it, it's it just was, you're a professional quarterback. Like there was no pressure. Just hits him yeah. in the hands, and he just took his eyes off and dropped. And so that's a bad one. But still, even still, they're down 21-7. But they get the ball, the half. They come out, yeah. or whatever, and they they make a little bit of a drive. But like the the. Um, the Eagles get the ball up 21-7 in the third towards the end of the third quarter. I think there's like four minutes left, something like that, in the in the third quarter. And the the Niners get a stop. They get a stop. Okay, this game's not over. I mean, we saw. I mean, we freaking Jaguars were down 27 yeah, nothing yeah. or 33 nothing, right? They were down right now. They're down 20. I'm 27. sorry. The, yeah, 27. The Colts, they were down 27 nothing. Sorry, the the Colts. The Colts were up 33 nothing. Um, so the Jaguars were down 27 nothing. They came back 21 seven. This game's not over with three minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah. They get a stop, and what happens is is that you, there's a roughing the kicker penalty, yeah. which is insane because the guy gets held, the 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 Niners player gets held, and then pushed into the kicker, and it's clearly not like there is contact between the kicker and 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 the defender, yes. yeah. but. It wasn't egregious, so it should have been running into the kicker, not roughing the kicker. I thought it was going to be running into the That's kicker. What, and, and, by the way, so here's the play right here, right? I mean, and just, like, he gets pushed. It, they'll do a close-up of it here. If you can if you can see it, if you can see it, like, May, Jordan Mason just literally gets pushed. He gets pushed by uh, his, <laughs> Shell. by Ooh. Shell or Ooh. Still, whatever. So, I mean, great like, play by him. <laughs> no, I mean, like, it just, you know what I mean? Like, like he gets he, held and then pushed, and that... That of course get first down and gives them the play. And what are you gonna do? I, there's nothing to your point to take away from the Niners game. I 
You're down Josh Johnson. Clearly, Brock Purdy couldn't throw. Yeah. They would have had him attempt to throw. So now you're like, what do you do? And like, how many jet sweeps can you do? And you're down. Could and Christian McCaffrey. Could, could, I guess. Can Christian McCaffrey he, throw? He, I don't know. Beast. Like, <laughs> he, just, first off, Christian long. McCaffrey, a beast. Yes. yes. Best running back in the league. Look, they knew they they only could run the ball. He was still getting yards. He, he was. Still goes 15 so, for 84 on a touchdown. But I don't think you can take any way, you know. Anyway, what sucks is because the, the quarterback situation in the Niners was so bad that everyone sort of leads the, lets the officiator and officiating off the hook in that game. But I would argue the officiating in the Eagles-Niners game was even worse than it was in the Chiefs-Bengals game. <laughs> By the way, the guy in charge of the officiating was John Hussey, who's the guy. Remember, like, I, I forgot to bring it out, but you remember, like, the, the Giants-Commanders oh, game? And everyone's like, oh, I put this out on we Twitter. Got it, got it right. They're so like, oh, they're, <laughs> Barry, you're still bitter. I am still bitter. Easy. But you know what? Like, it's still a bad call. Yeah, like, how did John Hussey get a playoff game? <laughs> All right. How did John Hussey get a playoff well, game? Man, how did he get a championship game? Giants commander still talking about it. All right, we're going to go to break He's when we awful. come back. The coordinator carousel in the like, NFL. Curtis Samuel's literally being hugged, and John Hussey <laughs> said after the game, it was a judgment call. Stop it! He's being hugged! <laughs> All right, coaches on the move. Kellen Moore has left the Dallas Cowboys. He'll be replacing Joe Lombardi uh, with the Chargers. Mike McCarthy said on Kellen Moore leaving Dallas after continuing through our end of season review process and having additional discussion, Kellen and the Cowboys reached a mutual dis decision to part ways. I want to thank Kellen for his deep commitment, hard work and dedication that were a core part of his time with the Cowboys. Matthew Berry, Mike McCarthy is calling plays next season. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Listen, as a, as a lifelong fan of the Washington Commanders, allow me just to say on this prospect, hail the Commanders, hail victory. I love it. I'm fully supportive of this. This is a great move for the Cowboys organization. I hope Mike McCarthy calls plays forever. And I can't wait for Kellen Moore to go crush. I, think about this. So for his career as a Cowboys offense coordinator, Kellen Moore, the Cowboys finished top six in point scores three of the four seasons that Moore called plays. They led the league in yards two of his four seasons. Top eight in passing yards three of the four seasons. Top ten in rushing yards three of the four seasons. But no, Mike McCarthy wants to throw him under the bus because once again the Cowboys underperform. Is it Kellen Moore's fault? Let me, guys, you guys seem smart. You guys no, seem all right. You just no. tell me this. Dak Prescott missed five games and led the NFL in interceptions. Is that Kellen Moore's fault? No. That, it, that, that, it, that, it that Dak, that he called a play where Dak Prescott <laughs> would throw to the guy on the other, in the other side. Look at this. He went four and one with Cooper Rush. Kellen Moore went four and one with Cooper freaking Rush. And look at, he scored over 20 points per game. Yes, they weren't particularly effective in the red zone there, but honestly, like over 300 yards a game with Cooper Rush. <laughs> with Cooper Rush, why does he not get any, why does Kellen Moore not get any credit for the emergence of Tony Pollard? Like Tony Pollard became a thing this year in a big, yeah. big way. Um, people questioned whether he could be an every down back and he became one under Kellen Moore. I don't understand why he doesn't get credit for that or the fact of the matter is is that other than C he missed Dalton Schultz for a decent amount of time and other than CeeDee Lamb, he really didn't have anyone. Like T.Y. Hilton, they had to sign T.Y. Hilton off, the, off his couch and he was playing significant snaps down the stretch because that's how thin they were at wide receiver in terms of the production they were getting and yet Kellen Moore still had them. Like, I, here's what I'll tell you. The last two seasons that Mike McCarthy was with Green Bay when he had Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. <laughs> He Packers did. finished 18th in total yards per game, 16th in points per game. Like middle of the pack with Aaron and then Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. Then Aaron Rodgers won two MVPs. <laughs> Since he left. Thank After you. That, this After might get scary now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, not exactly walking in the footsteps of Giants either with uh, Cullen Moore replacing Joe Lombardi, uh, who had, I think, a 0% approval rating. Just last one quickly, right. Dolphins Kel hired. Kellen Moore's expect I don't think it's been official yet, but expect Kellen Moore is expected to be the new offense coordinator of the Chargers, which will be exciting, I think. That's, that's a good move for all those yep. guys. Dolphins also hire Vic Fangio. He'll be the highest paid coordinator in the league managing their defense. Dolphins is going to be scary next year, I think. Xavier and Howard gets healthier, full year of Bradley Chubb. Two are a huge question mark, but huge upside on that team. He's an unbelievable, uh, you know, defensive coordinator. What do you think this does to the betting marker in terms of Dolphins futures? I mean, they're going to be right there just behind the Bills in the AFC East, but they're a team that can certainly get to the AFC title game. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we'll talk about the early Super Bowl line and the best bets in the game.
All right, the action never stops at BetMGM. Sign up now using bonus code BERRY and your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Simply download the BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code BERRY to make your first wager risk-free up to $1,000. The Chiefs are two-point underdogs in the Super Bowl to the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this line is the wrong way. Chiefs should be two-point favorites. Patrick Mahomes is a two-point underdog in the Super Bowl. It's wrong. Chiefs win this game, Matthew. Yeah, we'll have two weeks to pr- break this all down, but very simply, guy who's been there versus the guy who hasn't. Give me the Chiefs to win this and to cover. I'll break this up. As of today, give me the Eagles. Just overall, <laughs> no, overall better. No. Again, look, this is tough for me. I like both these dudes, you know what I'm saying? But give me the, give me, uh, the Eagles. Right. Should be a great game. The Andy Reid Bowl, the Kelsey Bowl. Start all the hype. We're back on Thursday. Peace out! Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the, you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.